Welcome to Hydrangeas by the Sea. Um, this is a project where we have taken a clock topper and we have um, taken a image transfer paper. This is actually printed the right way, um, but if you were doing an image transfer, it would be reversed. And then I used the decoupage medium, put the image transfer on here, and then rubbed off the paper backing so that only the ink is left. So I've taken all the work out of this, this great background. I did a slip slap and then I put the image transfer on there and only the ink is left. All the paper has been rubbed off. And then I painted to embellish it. And then we've got this universal little clock topper for your banners that you hang it, you know, you get one skinny wall in your house and you can, you can fit, you know, something long and skinny. So let's make it be changeable. So you flip this into the little hole there and now you've got a clock topper that, um, here's my um, nutcracker for the holidays. So it takes the same place season after season. You don't have to change what you've got hanging there. Here's a all year round um, chicken. And then, you know, you've got your summertime and you want to have your hydrangeas out. You can do it without a clock if you want to. Um, the clock just makes it be functional and um, functional and artwork. So the, um, the project is really interesting because of this whole background effect and everything. When I first started doing it, I was terrified um, when the glue dried. Um, everything puckered in, um, but you can see now that there is no problem with everything hanging straight, so you'll see what to do about that. Um, and I just, I hope you enjoy because this was a lot of fun. All right, we're going to paint a banner, and when we're doing this, look at you on camera, we're going to use a foam roller. Um, this is a great roller because we're going to do a slip slap technique and you need to have that rounded nose on it and that way you don't get sharp edges. You want to make sure that you don't have things laying on your, um, on your table underneath because that will make um, extra details on your um, rock lawn. This is rock lawn. It's blackout weight drapery lining fabric. We sell it on the website but you can get it um, at stores. I'm going to use bleach sand and I'm going to give the whole thing one coat of bleach sand using the roller. So we just roll into, and you want to be careful about spitting. Rollers like to spit back on you and you'll end up wearing little flecks. Okay, we just, this is the easiest way to base coat rock lawn. I'm using the rough side of the rock lawn. And notice that if I don't put enough paint, see how I get kind of a little bit of a weird pattern. Um, so you want to make sure that you use enough paint, but you don't want to oversaturate it. Um, this piece is going to be big enough. I'm going to do an image transfer on this. And so I've got my image transfer paper, and so the piece is going to be as big as that. And I've got enough here to do like a couple of banners. I don't need to cut this right out of the middle. And I'm going to use this topper, which is what this looks like. And so um, what I want to make sure this paper fits exactly within those holes. So um, what I'll do is I'll paint just like a section of this, and then we'll, then we'll cut it down. All right, I'm on my black non-skid, non-stick mat, and I just want to show what the beautiful thing about non-stick mats is. Paint just comes right off, and literally, if I had a paper towel out, I give it a little mist with some water, then the paint just wipes right off. And that's what I love that I've got paper underneath here, and I love that I have to change my paper all the time. I love that this is um, heat safe up to like, I don't know how many, hundreds and hundreds of degrees. So I can use my hot glue gun on here. Nothing sticks. My tape has a hard time sticking. Um, I can do my glue gun right on it. I can use it as a palette if I want to and it cleans right up. Um, the, ooh, the epoxy um, molding stuff doesn't stick to it. Um, nothing sticks to it. So it is a brilliant thing. So anyway just to demonstrate on that. Um, so I want to show you a shortcut when you're using a roller. I've got to go ahead and base this. I'm going to use multi-purpose sealer. And I'm just going to go ahead and use my dirty roller. You don't have to wash it out because it's going to be based the same colors. And it doesn't matter if there's a little paint in that. Okay, and then I'll give it a base coat and get everything dry with my rock lawn. My rock lawn is over here drying flat. What I wonder sometimes for people who have had a hard time with things um, 
rolling or curling on the rock lawn. I wonder how many people are painting these in classes and then carting them home with um, mildly wet surfaces and rolling them up and stuff like that. So make sure that you allow it to completely dry. And I've been, I hit it with the blow dryer a little bit here. Um, but do make sure completely, completely dry. And then on this, go ahead and do the multi-purpose sealer on both sides. That way you're um, completely sealed down and you don't have to worry if you hang it outside or whatever. And the rock lawn is um, good for hanging outside as well. So you have an indoor-outdoor project, although I'm going to put a clock in this, and I don't know how many of us need a clock on our front porch. This is to go with the... Um, the um, I did the series of four nutcrackers, and this is going to be done in the same colors so that you could, if you did that project, because a lot of people did that project, um, you have your topper already, and then this base will go with those colors, so you can just put that inside your um, clock topper. But with this one, instead of doing the decoupage on the clock face, what I'm going to do is do the image transfer on the clock face. That way I don't have any of those edges and things. All right, I'm ready to do the slip stop technique. Um, you can hear the difference here. I've got a little bit of raised texture. I can take my sanding disc, and I can just give it a little sand. Now I've done this a little bit bigger. I did my experiment on the rock lawn. I really wasn't sure if the um, if the image transfer would work as nicely on the rock lawn or not. And what I found was it worked beautifully. But my edges, if I got it really close to the edges, my edges were a little bit hard for me to get at. So I want to make sure I'm going to put my paper here in the middle so that my edges are just edges, and then I'll cut that down after I get my um, image transfer part done. Okay, so next we got that sanded, lost the sanding disc. A little bit more right here. And I'm on the rough side. You can paint on either side of the rock lawn. There's a smooth and a rough, um, whatever your personal preference is. Okay, and now what we'll do is I'm going to stand up to give myself a little bit of workspace. And we're going to use um, bleach sand. Yeah, I'm getting down to the bottom on that one. And my antique white. My antique white is about dust. Now we've got these great new labels for these, um, for the paint colors. And so as I'm using my paints, I'm just labeling and then putting a little swatch. But then you don't want to have to swatch again. So what I'm doing is just taking the lid off the new paint and swapping them out. Because the labels, we got the labels are the super duper don't come off labels. And so what's nice about that is they're not going to just loosen up like the removable ones do. Um, but what's bad about that is you can't easily pick it off and reuse it. So to prevent spending any additional monies, oh, I think I'm going to have to go get a new bleach sand. Okay, I use bleach sand almost like breathing air, I think. Okay, so we want to wet everything with our bleach sand. Okay, and it's definitely important to have a roller here, because this would take a hundred years. When you use a brush on, on a canvas type surface, um, when you use a brush, the, um, the canvas seems to absorb a million hundred tons of the paint. And a million hundred is a lot. <laughs> so, get this all wet. And then what's nice about the rock lawn is you can just drape it down the table. Just don't lean on it too close with your legs. Okay. Now I'm going to take the nose of my brush, which is not a brush, nose of my roller. I'm going to go into this color, and I'm just going to slip slop here and there. And then I'm going to roll it. So I keep it mostly on the nose. Okay. And then I just kind of X walk it around, and then I can go back into the back side to soften and blend. And you're looking for a very mottled kind of effect. Wet and wet is important, that way the two colors will mesh and blend. But we do not want to make mud. I don't want to make a mix of this, these two colors. 
very easy to do. Squint at your surface and that will help you get an uneven or an even unevenness. You're looking for any kind of lines that you leave behind or blobs that aren't blended. Okay, and you want to go all the way up. And once again, I'll allow this to dry completely flat and make sure it's good and dry. And I, I try not to really roll my, my um, banners up. I normally will hang them on a, like a, a pants hanger and that keeps them straight. But I've got banners that I've done like four years ago and they're still, after going to shows and all the abuse they go through, they're still not curling. So I think that um, hanging them flat is a better idea than rolling them up. And you can hang a whole ton of them on, on your um, pants hangers. Okay, so we'll go into, make sure this one's not quite dry yet. So I'll do blow dryer, but I'll do this exact same technique on here. All right, now I've got a mess on my mat, and let me show you a real easy way to clean up. I'm going to use either my three-sided squeegee or my little scraper. Um, and this just makes really fast work. So you just mist it, and throw things on the floor, and then it just all loosens and scrapes right off, and you're good to go. And if you don't have a scraper, that's fine too, but it just makes it go so fast. I mean, it just wipes off anyway, but... The scraper is fantastic when you spatter on the mat, the little itty bitty little specks don't want to come off as much as these big messes. So the squeegee just goes whoosh, and it just gets them right off of there. All right, now I'm dry and now we need to make some basic marks. We're going to use our Triple Threat Ghost Rider, the most amazing, wonderfulest tool in the universe. It's got a gray um, ceramic lead a roller ball so and a padded grip so that when you're tracing your patterns it's easier just trust me on that one a white ceramic lead I use these on um, ornaments and it's got an eraser and parked in the back so that you can erase things it erases with spit water varnish um, so you don't end up with a bunch of lines on your piece now I want to leave that edge like I told you about but I'm gonna need a lot of I need that fold over amount um, of space I'm not going to have this white line around the edge, so I'm not going to end up with as much flop as I wanted down here at the bottom line. So what we'll do is we'll just give myself a corner, okay, and then we'll take our T-square. So these are two important things that you want to use. An L-square is going to give you straight corners, and the T-square is going to um, make sure that when you line things up that you get straight lines. Okay, so I'm going to park my paper into this corner when I do this. So I'm going to need to trim my paper. Um, it comes pre-trimmed. I just didn't have it trimmed yet. I'm going to put it on backwards. That's why it's printed backwards. With image transfer, what happens is you um, we're actually going to transfer all of the laser ink off of here onto our piece, and we're going to rub off all the paper. Okay, so the only thing that will be left is our, um, our ink. And so everywhere where you see ink, including these colored colorations, um, is going to be on the piece. And that's going to help give it a kind of an interesting background, all these highs and lows and stuff like that. So let's get started. All right, so I've got my paper trimmed. And now what we're going to do is we're going to apply an even coat. And you're going to have to work kind of quickly. And if you're having a hot day, don't do this on a hot day without you know air and things flowing because... You don't want your, um, and you don't want it super de duper de thick. You want just a nice, good, even coat. And go past your edge that you're going to be on, but you don't want to glue your edge down, otherwise you won't be able to get it um, back off. So get it on there, and then you'll adjust for, um, oops, oh, I found some dried stuff. Shake your product. There we go. And it dries clear, so you don't have to worry about stuff being on there. Get it all on there nice and even, and then we'll go back and make sure that it's all wet. I think image transfer is one of the coolest things that we have got, um, got going on because there's so many things we want to do to backgrounds of things. Uh, you know, I always want to paint, but um, I don't necessarily want to spend 800 hours in my background of my product project. 
<clears throat> work it into the the um, the pores of the canvas. Don't play with it too long or you'll end up with it dry. Don't want that. And we don't want it real juicy. I made a mistake. I did some experimenting. I made a mistake or I experimented and found out it didn't work. That um, the juicier it is, then you can have lifting. And if you have it too thin, you can have lifting. So just nice medium even coat is the best. Okay, and then we'll look and see where things are not shiny or are shiny. Now, if some of my lines don't go on my piece, then who cares, right? So we have, um, we just, we won't worry about that because it's just for the background effect. Okay, I think that's pretty even. Just even it out. Brushing on canvas is just such a drag. It's so easy to, e difficult to get things even. Down in that corner where I started. Make sure my edges are wet. Okay. Now we'll go on here. I got it big enough. Yeah. Go on here and I'll get that lined up in the corner so I'm straight. And I don't want to glue that down so we, we wipe towards our edges. And you don't need a paper towel. So we'll press it all in, and on the edges I wouldn't care if I didn't need to hear anyway. And flatten it with our hand first. Okay, and you'll make sure you're still straight. And use the brayer. And that displaces the glue so you don't end up with pockets and things like that. Don't bray over on the gluey edge though. If you do the gluey edge, and you'll get stuck down, and you'll never get it off. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my edge, and I'm just going to make sure changing. All right, I got some on top of there. I'm use a different finger, and then just wipe them off. And then we take our paint saver, because it's got a slightly domed lid. And then we just make sure, you can use your finger, your nails, whatever, you want to make sure it's embedded in there nicely. Right next to my edge. And work from the middle out. Any bubbles, you can just ease them out. You want a smooth surface underneath. You don't want a bunch of texture. Make sure it's nice and pressed in and then all that ink will get captured. And then you let it dry. Um, if you're scaredy pants um, and you're intimidated by this, let it dry overnight just to make sure, and then if, don't forget, this is a fairly cheap um, piece of product to experiment on. Um, and then if you're brave, you can go ahead and push the envelope and just go ahead and blow dry. Okay, and let it dry. Okay, so here is what happened after I blow dried my piece. Number one, it got sweaty underneath because of the liquid and then the heat. And so I was making wet under here. So. I would make sure that I wiped that down or moved my piece to another place. So I think I've got it dry. Um, it doesn't feel cold, but I do have this interesting raising. Now, when I did my test, I didn't have that, but I didn't have um, I didn't have slop around the edges. I did the whole entire piece. So what we're going to see is if this is a failure or not after we get the paper off. So we're going to use the little heart-shaped um, sanding disc, and we're going to rough up that paper. This is open the pores so that you can get um, started getting the paper off. Okay, 
You can wipe that dust off. You're about to make a big mess, so. And then, squirt. Okay, get it wet. And you can see that the paper is already fading. You can see the image behind it. And then you just start rubbing the paper off. Now, because my fingers are getting sore, I'm just going to use my paper towel. And it'll just rub off nice and big at first, and then you'll end up with a little mist that you got to rub off. And you just keep it wet. And that is that will make it so everything just peels right off. And I always do it kind of gentle. I guess I don't know why I do that. Um, if it's not going to work, it's not going to work. But um, And so what, let's talk about that. If this didn't work and you had a piece that you were concerned about throwing away, like you didn't want to throw it away, um, what would you do? Um, this is completely flat to the surface, so I would go ahead and continue taking my paper off and then just rebase coat and change gears or try it again. So the nice thing about this is you're really not affecting the surface. There's no raised parts. Um, you know, you don't have to really sand it. It would just be like messing up on like painting a face or something like that. And so you would just start over. So if you totally jack it up, just start again. I think this would be really fun to get some flowers and a real busy kind of um, project like my cornucopia project and go ahead and do um, the image transfer and then use it as my pattern lines and um, do a little washes and glazes instead of base coating and stuff. See where I haven't sanded very much, it's harder to get started. It's harder to get the little bits started. So do definitely sand. And I like that little heart thing because it's got that hard back to it and it's small size so it's handy to have around. Just make a little pile. You'll vacuum more when you're doing image transfers. And I'm just going to continue rubbing. I'll get it down to the first layer just so that everything's at this level. And I'll come back and show you what, what it looks like and where we go next. Isn't it magical? Look at how cool. Now what I noticed was on my edges where I was having issues um, getting that glue out from the edges, that made it, like if, if my piece would have ended right on my edge, then I would have not been worried about gluing the pieces together. But because my piece had stuff out from it, um, I probably would have been better off to leave my white paper line on it so that that way I didn't I could get braid down all the way to my edges because that definitely come out came out a little bit fuzzy. I also noticed that farther away from me where I'm not the closest is where I had my most um, non taken care of areas. So make sure you do rotate your piece to get closer to it. But am I concerned about any of that? Absolutely not. Now you can see a milkiness still on here. That's the next layer of the paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow dry this um, just to make sure everything that's on here is completely dry. Then I'm going to go in for a second rub down and then we'll take the final little bits off. All right, I've got it pretty much dry. I didn't go for all the way dry. I made sure to dry underneath and on top. And I've still got a teeny bit of rippling but I believe when I get this all done and I cut it to size um, it's going to be absolutely fine. So we'll just go for round two, lots of water, and don't be afraid of this. This is so much fun. I challenge you to do one image transfer today. Just go do it. Go get a piece of blank something and practice it, try it, play with it. It is just way too much fun. And we have got, let me show you what we've got going on the website. On the website we have got chef words and Christmas words and big words and fall words and music. Imagine being able just to put a little bit of music in the background of your project. Um, we've got butterfly papers. We've got um, postage. You can just make just the most amazing thing. We've got a whole collection of clocks, um, wine labels, all these things that you could just insert in your background right over your paint, do image transfer, and you've got just something that nobody else has. I mean, you can make it so magical. I just really think that this is just such a fantastic way to add that kind of finished quality to your work um, because you know you just you can't you can't do that with a brush you could but my god it would be horrendous to do so getting those getting those letters in the background and all the different faded tone on tone and then adding the art on top 
that to me is just so liberating. Okay, so see how that's just wiping off the rest of them. And these blue paper towels are fantastic. They just hold up really nicely. We've got new butterfly um, papers with collections of butterflies. You can put singles on your projects. And remember that it takes on the effect of the background. So for example, I had this base coated already blue and then I just put letters on top of it. So whatever you're doing, you know, I've got my slip slap um, paint back here. It's just absorbing and adding to that. So when you're doing this, it's not going to be sitting on top of and looking strange. It's going to meld in with because that paper comes off. So I'll just spend a couple minutes just taking off the rest of the little fuzzies. It is nice to have this edge not be there. Um, that was a real pain on that little blue sample thing. And that's why you do samples, by the way, so that you can find out where things are going to be painful and then skirt around them. Okay, and then I'm going to dry it one more time and then I'm going to get the last little fuzzies off. I'll probably use my hand on the last step because it's easier to tell where things are. The last little bit of rubbing is done on a moist but not wet um, surface so that you can just kind of, the, the almost wet dry grabs the little bits and it loosens them. And when I first started doing this, I was really afraid to go further with this level and um, now pretty much I have no fear. So um, it's natural to be afraid at first. I am not going to have fingerprints by the time I am done though. I need to find a, another method for the final thing or not do so much of it. That just loosens up those little bits. When you see the when you see this in person and feel that the glue stays flexible and that it's just just so rich looking and amazing, um, you could sew this. Rocklon is perfectly a sewable surface, so you could do this on you know any kind of fabric or anything you wanted to. Um, okay, now I'm dry down here, so I've got to give it a little little drink. And I'll share that water around. But you could totally do this on just about any surface. What I'd like to do is do something where I go around the whole surface with a background, like a, one of the Bentwood boxes or something like that. It's amazing how much little bits of paper there still are on here. And you can see how tough I'm being on this. This is not me being wimpy. Don't sand it after you get going because the sanding um, leaves little dark, scratchy kind of things on it. That I did find out as well. And we'll dump that into the trash and then continue with the finals. This is a pretty big size one. Um, you know, I'm not saying that this, it hasn't been hard at all. Um, a little scary, I'd say, when it puckered up like that, but then this is straightened right back out. But this is why we experiment, and this is why um, you guys watch Toll TV, is because I'll go and play and do things that don't seem right and just see if we can. All right, I'll finish this up and we'll get to painting. Okay, we're going to sand the topper. It's gotten a little bit rough. Take that dust off. And then I chose a clock that, um, that had the same coloring. So what we've done is we've printed things on the same tone coloring papers. And so that you can coordinate your efforts. So if I wanted to put chef words with beach stuff and clocks, these all are the same palette. But then we've got a green palette that, we, that we're using, and a blue palette, and then red as well. And so what we're doing is giving, um, having them all be corresponding in their um, color names. So if you see like um, antique red, it's going to all be the same background color with this. Um, antique blue will all be the same background color with this color blue, even if we're going from beach stuff to chef stuff to clocks. Okay, 
So I've chosen the antique clock, the Victoria Station. And then I will just, I'm going to have to go ahead and cut out my circle here because I don't want this other stuff going on, but I do want that modeled effect on there. So I will cut it out to the line so that I don't end up with extra stuff. I could base cut it out. That might be, not be a bad idea. I think I might do that. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of get close and then I can slip slap base coat that out. That way my line will stay nice and crisp out there on the outer edge because I'll be able to push it into the stuff. And then I want to have it centered right, so I'm going to go ahead and get that part. And we want to know where true north is, so here's my north, and I'll go on the back and I'll look through and mark it. Okay, so I want to make sure that I know exactly where my 12 o'clock is. Okay. All right, I'll take my T-square and line it up on my clock and mark at the top of the bottom. Whoops, hello. You know, it would really help if I was doing that in the center. So that's when we take our little eraser that comes on board and we erase that puppy off. Silly, silly, silly. Okay, so we'll go right up the middle of the hole. And then these marks will tell me where my north and my south are when I line that up on there. Okay. Then we'll take our medium. I'm going to get out some fresh. I'm not going to use the stuff that got, you know, blow dried and dried. And I, I know I'm going to want in that general vicinity. But I don't want to mark over my, um, oops, Europe. I don't want to mark over my line because my line will be kind of sunk in there. And remember, not too thick. I think that is where we all want to go is put, to put it on really thick. And so I'll go back and smooth it out. And you have a little play time. You have a little bit of time to move it around and stuff. Okay. Work it from the inside out. Okay, now I'm going to get my little brayer here. It really helps to have that hard edge to be able to. So I'm going to make sure I really focus on that line and remember to to alternate it because that was what happened to me is the stuff that was far away from me helps if you have glasses the stuff that was far away from me I didn't gray down it really seems to need that am I missing I'm missing some blue here If you seal down the paper, the paper will not come off. See, by turning that, I caught that I didn't have glue, but I don't think I'd have caught it I'm doing it the other way. Yep. Okay, wipe that off. And then once I get good contact all the way around, then I'll just braid it down one more time. And we'll go through the same process. All right, my plan is to put hydrangeas down here at the bottom. Um, and so I'm not going to, since there's not really a lip or an edge when you do the image transfer, I'm going to cut it square down here. And so I'm going to use my triple thread. And I want to just get that little bit of an edge off. I'm make sure that I'm tracking pretty true. Okay, and I think I am. 
make a line all the way down. Okay, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. And I'm just going to trim this straight on up. And then you can use your T-square, and you can make your longer lines and stuff like that. Well, I thought I was going to be able to make this be a cut banner, but the way that I have it in my brain that I want to design it, it's not going to work out the way that I thought. So I haven't made a straight banner before, so we're just going to have a straight banner. All right, the first thing we want to do is get out our faux finishing medium. Um, this is going to help our flowers stay nice and loose. We're going to need a good filbert brush, and then I've got, this is the... Um, trying to think of which name of this. It's an oval wash brush and it's the half inch, but I can't think of a name. I'll get it off the website here in a bit. <clears throat> this one I like because it's wide and it's thick. It has a good has a good body to it. We'll pick up our medium and then we'll come down here and we'll just go ahead and put coats and we'll go outside of our lines, go all the way to our edges. So I've trimmed this final little piece off down here. And what we want to do is take our darkest color, which is going to be Admiral Blue, which has not been used in probably a while, so I'll need to do it. Oh, I've cut two empty jars of Admiral Blue. Apparently at some point I really liked it. We'll take Admiral Blue, and we're just going to use just, we want to block in some hydrangea shapes. And I want them kind of faded. And see how that white down here is making that bright line? We'll get rid of that in a, bit, in a little bit. I don't want this to be too, too, too busy. And I'll pick up more medium as I need to to block these in. Now this isn't going to be this dark. This is just um, the undercoat. You've got to have something underneath for the other stuff to be seen. It's going to come up here. And tuck some leaves in here and there too. Ooh, y'all. No base coating. And that one coming off. Let me bring this one out just a little bit. Maybe I'll tumble one more in here. And we'll just base coat that edge. And we'll see, do we like it or not? Okay. And we'll get out our green and we'll use our, um, let's use our softest green for this. We'll use a slate green, which is probably also a color I haven't used very much lately. We'll pick up medium on our brush. And what we want to do is we're going to just create some shapes out here. Hydrangeas are pretty leafy things. The reason I'm using the lightest is because I want them to just kind of fade out there into that, out into that outer edge. And now just with dirty brush, I'll pick up a little bit more of the blue and maybe I'll poke a little hydrangea guy down here. And so that'll be kind of like it'll sink it down over there, but it won't be like a hello, here I am, I'm a lot of stuff. And then up here at the top, pretty ding dang diddly certain. And I'm going to want to do the same thing up here. And just a little peek. And I think we could go a little heavier up here. And then lots and lots and lots of medium to just kind of show that there's something fading in the background. Kind of cloudy almost. All right, now we'll switch brushes. And so that basically just blocks us and it lets us um, just kind of see where we're going. We'll pick up our better brush and we need our blue colors out. So I'm going to get out Blue Harbor, which is a new color. And 
and soft lilac and white. And we'll have our, basically those will be our four blues, even though white isn't a blue. But those will be our four colors that we'll use. <clears throat> okay, and now what we need to do is go in on the hydrangeas and we need to just start building. We're going to start with the dark, pick up some faux finish medium, and just start building a background. And we don't really need to worry about strokes at this point because um, you're not going to be able to see them anyway. But we need to start building a foundation. And I'll, I'll go ahead and finish this one so you can see like our destination. We also, this um, using this dark back here, is going to cloud that um, the drawing, our transfer. And the transfer is just going to kind of make things kind of more interesting. All right, now I'll pick up the lighter blue, which is the Blue Harbor. And then I'll start making just little things that look a little bit more like hydrangea petals inside and right on top of what I did already. And we'll bust edges. Don't be staying within, don't be staying within that hydrangea line. Because if you do that, then you'll have little blue basketballs parked all over your piece. And I do a little, just kind of a stroke, stroke, stroke to each side. I do kind of a little three petal kind of little thing that I have quite a little rhythm with. Okay. Now we'll wait until it dries to do the final stuff, like the glazing and things, but you can see kind of where we're going. If my brush gets too messy, I'll just um, wipe it out. Now I'm going to pick up some of the um, soft lilac. And then I'm going to make some more top looking petals. These need to be more like petals. So I need to make sure that I'm giving them starts and stops and clusters. And they need to be close together. If you put them scattered, then they'll look like buckshot. And so this will be our dark side, and then this will be the light side. Okay? And that's kind of the direction we're going to go. Um, I'm going to walk you through the rest of them and all that, but um, just a lot of repetition. Um, we'll stop here. We'll do some highlighting. We'll do some centers, and we'll do some glazing, and then that'll finish it up. Hydrangeas are one of my favorite things to paint. Now, we've got to shake this up just a little bit. We can't have it all be blue hydrangeas, so I need to get out a purple, I think. Okay, I got out Pansy Lavender, just to give us a little bit of a glaze or a tint of something, something going on. And I could mix my Pansy Lavender with my um, dark blue, and I could do this one right next to this with a blue or a red undertone. Okay, so I'm just kind of making blobs going in there. And then I could go back on top of it, and where it's darker, I could give it more blue, and so it'll have just a poke of um, those colors coming out. Now I'll mix my Pansy Lavender with a little white, the next color up. <clears throat> Brush mix is fine. And so because we've got that blue kind of undertone, then that makes it all get along with each other. And then when we glaze them, we'll glaze the blue one with some purples, and we'll glaze the, the purple one with some blues, and that makes everybody a nice family. Okay, so we'll go back up into, let's do a little of that same mix up here on the northern. Okay, now we'll go into our white. Hey, guess what? That's wet paint. One thing about painting with something that is very wet, um, get out your acrylic bridge. And now I won't have to worry about. And it will help you be looser, actually, a looser painter. If you use the acrylic bridge, um, you get more distance back. And the more distance you have from a project, then the looser you will paint. And that is why 
you'll see those fine artists always hold their brush way back here. That's so that their their brush strokes are very very loose. Okay, so that will help you, and it will keep your hands out of the mushy mushy because I'm really using a lot of paint here. Now I'll pick up more white. Our our light source is going to have to be coming from the same direction, so make sure that you keep your light source um, appropriate. Okay, so we've got a couple of... We could take and wipe out our brush, and we could go in here and just give a couple of hints of this purple into our blue. And we'll do that with glazes, that's just easier. Okay, and now we'll go for, I think we'll go for, I'm not trying to make these all blue, but I mean, or purple, but I seem to be leaning that direction. What I don't want is I don't want same, same, same. Okay, so if you're painting and they all look exactly the same, then you need to break it up. And so what I'm doing is I'm alternating the colors around here. But by doing some brush mixes, then you can alter them slightly um, in a couple different directions instead of just all in like blue, purple, blue, purple. Okay, so we've got some good hydrangea action going here. These ones over here on the side could be a little bit softer. I'm really liking this softer stroke look, and that's the way that that happened is the whole underside was very wet with the, um, like the base color. So I think I'm going to go. Now this one's not going to get as much um, highlight because this one is underneath other guys. I'm liking that soft blended look. So make sure that you have the medium. Now notice that that doesn't look very round yet and that's because the edges are not very dark and so that that will change when we add the layers. Okay now I think we can have a blue one again. Got my medium. Okay and I think we'll do a blue guy right here. And I'm changing my technique a little bit. Notice this. It's faster just to go ahead and give it a scumbly base coat. And then I'll tuck that in here and around. And then that's going to make it nice and um, uniformly wet. Now I've got to get it a little bit darker. And now I might go through and just make some of my strokes. I'm wiping out my brush from time to time. Making sure I have medium in my brush. Raw. Too much near the same color. Bust outside of those shapes. Wipe my brush out because that color will get kind of swallowed up with the other color. But my brush is dirty, so um, I'll be able to do dirty brush. Mix some white. And we'll do the final highlights with a real fine little brush and stuff like that. It's amazing how fast the hydrangeas do paint up though. I think we'll do another blue one up here. We'll bust the rule of you know, matchy matchy and, and have two of them side by side, although I think I picked up the wrong color. I picked up the purple mix. And I'll just base coat right at the edge. Stroke. And we'll have another Maybe purple back over here or something. Make it darker. Especially down here where things are going to be the darkest. 
Tell you, do you not love the idea of painting with this lovely um, paper behind here, the image transfer? Everybody that has seen this, um, I've been running around showing everybody, it's like magic. If you teach classes and you teach at conventions and stuff, you've got to do a, a class like this. Because this, this is fast, it's easy, um, it's sure to work, um, it's amazing. It's cheap. I mean, gosh, you can't get better. Imagine shipping, like, you know, you wouldn't have any weight to ship. Okay, so now I've got some hydrangeas on that side. And they're not finished. We're not, you know, we're not anywhere near finished with the project yet, but um, that just, whoops, get you on camera. Nice and fast, nice and quick, nice and fun, loose. Absolutely awesome. I'm impressed um, just with how it all goes. <clears throat> okay, so over here on this side, we're going to do dark blue in the corner. And base coat the edges in the corners. And so I've got the light in my brush. Be aware um, when we've taught the different hydrangea projects, if you don't like the color purple, you're going to lean away from it and you're probably going to end up with all blue. Um, if you don't like blue and you love purple, you're going to end up with all purple. Um, when I do my dried hydrangeas, it's really funny to watch people lean towards one color or the other. So um, just be aware that your your fingerprint or your your um, your personality is going to come out in this project. And it's going to look just slightly different than mine, just because it's a very loose is always like that. <clears throat> loose projects always take on the personality traits of their owner. Okay, going to go into, I don't think I got that dark enough yet. I'm going to go back into the dark blue and give us a, a base back here. And I'm going to skip over Blue Harbor because, oh, you sure? Maybe I'm not. Back to Blue Harbor. Okay. Yiko. Got just a little too juicy there. Okay. Some hydrangea shapes. Now I'm into the soft lilac. Wiping the brush. I'm going to go into, um, for this one up here, let's get it darker with the, the mix of the blue and the purple. And the white in my brush makes it lighter. And I wa also wanted it um, re wetted. And then I'll just mix into the white with the next coat. Okay, and I think we'll let that sit there. Now one thing that I think we need, we're going to switch out to our bigger brush. Yeah. Love the sound effects, right? Okay, we're going to switch out to our bigger brush. And I want to make, um, I'm going to use the faux finish medium, and I'm going to use just some of these colors on here. And just really glazy glazy on my palette. Oh, did you see that? Giant bottle of paint landed in the medium. Okay, time for a new paper towel. Okay, so just real washy, blotted on my paper towel, and then uh, more medium. I need it a little bit wet. I'm going to stand up so to make my voice louder. And then I want to bring some of some color, which I'm not getting out into these areas and it's loose and it's just barely there and it's slip slapped and I'll do a little purple just really want ever so slight the purple comes out nice and red that's neat Okay, we'll come up here and we'll do the same thing up here, even though we haven't done our hydrangeas yet. I like that pansy lavender up there. 
And over these colors, look at how just like lacy and wonderful that is. And then we'll take, wipe out the brush. You can see how I can just wipe that off. And just kind of walk it up. My lighthouse. More medium. A little bit of blue this time snuck in. We'll bring it up here around. That'll increase the, the glazing shading look. We'll bring up the shading, the blue, lots more medium. Bring it down in. We'll bring some of that blue coming up out of the hydrangeas. Okay. I think that's plenty. We'll go back to our smaller brush. And we'll flip over. And yeah, that's looking pretty good, I think. Medium on our brush, <clears throat> dark. I don't want these to be too, too heavy, so I'm going to tuck that dark blue one in the corner with the medium. Get you on the camera. Wipe it out and then go into our blue. This is not showing very much, but I think that'll be okay. We'll make these be just softer up here, and so we might make them just a little bit lighter. In the overall way. So our highlights might be a little bit higher, but our darks uh, won't get it, they won't feel as heavy if we keep them a little bit lighter. And since they're hanging from the sky, that's probably a good thing. <clears throat> okay, I'm not getting, my white's not staying. Ooh, it stayed that time. My white's not staying because everything's wet and it's just blending with everything. So I think our whites are going to have to be an end, an end piece. Okay, so now we'll go into the purple with the blue. And more blue. And we'll go ahead and do the sky that color as well. And then we'll pick up the purple plus the white. So next color. Gotta shake up the edges on these ones. And more white. Yep, it just does not want to sit on there. More white. Nope. We'll get the white to stay next time. Okay, so we probably need just a little bit. We can use this brush and a lot of medium. With a faux finish medium, you need a lot, so you definitely want a jar of it. Like, don't borrow from your neighbor because you'll be using like half a jar of the medium. But it really makes painting these much easier. Okay, and then we'll bring out a little bit of blue down out here. Okay, now, 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 now. Okay, we're about dry down here. Rinse out the brush. So we start with something 
fresh. Now we will glaze and we'll glaze with the dark. So I'm going to float with this um, big oval brush, okay, and the way we're going to do that is I'm just going to kind of corner load and float the blue. Sometimes um, you can reactivate the medium, so do be aware if you start doing any kind of weird lifting or anything like that, um, be aware that it could just be that you're reactivating it, and so you don't want to do that, and you might blow dry it more. Um, I'm not having a problem, so. And you've been with me the, the whole project. All right, I think we can give a little bit of the blue to the backs of these. Same thing over here. And then in these dark um, areas that the background is showing, fill them in. Okay, now they're getting awfully heavy for what we have, um, and so now we'll lighten them just a little bit. <clears throat> okay, and so I also want to glaze with the purple. Okay, so I'm picking that up. don't have any water. Somehow I managed to get eight miles from my water bucket. Okay, now with this one we'll glaze here and there in the um, lighter purple in the blue, sorry, in the blue flower area. Just to make our color families go a little bit better together. Okay, so we'll end up with purpley blues. All right, now we will make some highlighters. I'm gonna get out some more medium. And it dries flat, so you don't have a problem um, with any lumps and bumps and things like that. Okay, and so now I want to go over my flowers. Medium. I'm just going to do one at a time. Then I want to look for the color that I want to get to. I'm liking this soft look of these guys up here, so I think I want to soften everybody up a little bit. So to soften the purple one up, I'm going to use my white and my purple, the pansy lavender, and then I'm just going to go ahead and pull out more of those colors. Soften that down just a little bit. So I've got the shading, but now I'm going to make um, things softer. I'm going to wipe my brush out, pick up the white, and kind of make it a little bit hyper white lot and then we'll go ahead in our highlight area nope more white and these are going to be just the more highlighted petals okay now we'll go and do our blues the same way we'll do our other purples <clears throat> same way so I'll get out I'll go ahead and wet both of these. This one back here I think could stay that color because he is sitting down there and he's just kind of happy. Okay, loving, loving, loving the acrylic bridge. What I love about it, like you could make this out of wood, but I love that I can see through to my project. So when I'm here, I'm not getting a blocked view. I can still continue to paint and feel like I know what I've done over here and I can get over here and I can actually, you know, make decisions because of what I'm seeing. You know, painting is so much about making decisions. And you've got to be able to tell what you're doing. Okay. Now we'll do the blue. <clears throat> and I'll just focus in the areas that are not dark in the more bright areas. And we'll go into our blue, but I think I'm going to need to mix. I'm going to mix the soft um, blue, the blah, 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 the soft lilac with the blue harbor. And we'll just make these guys just a little bit more medium blue instead of dark medium. I 
that's just a little bit light over there. So adjust for the area that you're working in. I think this one's dried over here. Pick up white. Pick it up again. You can always tell I'm getting quiet and thinking. Okay. Liking, liking, liking it. I think we could tuck just a little bit of a hint of color, really hinty, coming out like there's another hydrangea going to start over here. So now we're going to paint some leaves. We're going to use our medium, our smaller brush, and we're going to use Arbor Green. And just get those kind of in there. We're going to leave these kind of loose. And that's not basing at all, so I want to maybe tone, um, tone the leaves just a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of the blue, or maybe the purple, and get a green that is duskier. Just a little bit of color poking out there. Bring up a little bit of leaf poking in here. Okay, and we'll go and get into our black bore screen. And I think we'll mix some of the blue in with the black bore screen. And we'll just darken up the back end of the leaf. into our dusky highlight color and just yeah, and just don't do anything that we like out here on the tip it's 
So it's just like a highlight and blend off the edge. Same thing back here. Okay, we are going to, I'm going to use an angle shader, and we're going to put in just a little V-shaped centers to our petals. Okay, just to give them just a little bit of, like this is where I am kind of thing. I can just kind of do a little splooch right there in the middle. That's working a little better than trying to angle shade. Okay, we'll do that and then it's just a nice strong pop of color because that's where our highlight dot is going to go. So we'll take a nice pointy round brush, okay, nice and fine. Go into our white, and then we're gonna put our little height, whoops, water in my brush. Water in the middle, there we go. And we'll just pop in a fairly good sized dot. And that just gives them little centers. And like I said, where these are, you want to keep them concentrated. You don't want them scattered about. You want to be able to um, see that that's where my highlights are. The same thing up here. Okay, now we need to do a little bit. I'm going to mix some of the green with my soft black. And we'll give ourselves um, veins for our leaves. It's real dark over there. Okay, so whether or not these are too bold next to this is the question that is being asked. So if you have a transition from one area to another, then you need to make sure that I'm going to get out the base color here and use it to tone my colors next to. So I use some antique, um, antique white, and my pansy lavender, and then just go ahead and transition into my background area, and then I'll pick up a little bit more of the pansy lavender and lighten up. So back into the white. And over here, we can be darker and heavier. And then we 
gonna go into white and do some of the edge highlights. softens that down. Now we'll do the same thing with the blue. We'll pick up the blue with the, uh, and I'll go into the Blue Harbor and um, Antique White. Okay, we'll give that a little transition area. So I think what's really interesting is when we're doing projects like this, is um, like this gets designed, you know, on camera and and whatever. And so as I'm finding, as I'm walking through it, I hope that you see that like your hydrangeas are not set in stone. If somebody says, "Hey, you know, maybe that is you know too purple or you know too sudden a transition or something like that," then you can see that oh, I can fix that easily. back over and then we'll go into the lighter blue and transition into that. That's kind of an ugly color we mixed to go on to the uh, Just soften everybody down. Okay. And so what's funny is now, look at our green leaves have kind of picked up some steam there, so I'm going to have to do something with them. Okay. Using just the soft lilac now to create some lighter back petals. Okay. And now we'll do the Green leaves kind of same way. We'll just take the gold, um, the antique white, sorry, and our highlight color, and maybe a little of the medium green color. And let's just transition them back a little bit so that they're not popped out there quite so much. So how do you get something to disappear? You make it become more like the background or by the, you make it be like something near it. So by using that background color, which is the antique white, then we can make the flowers disappear or tone down by making them be more like the background, and you fuzz that line. The contrast is beauty, but then also um, knowing how to fade out the contrast so that you don't, you know, you don't want that person in the room that's screaming um, to get all the attention. You want to have attention where you want to have attention. And then this one, to become more like the background, it actually gets to stay dark or the same kind of values as the other. Now one thing um, we've talked about before 
is the value scale. And that is the color, not the value scale, but the um, value finders on the three in one color tool. There are value finders on here. And so when I hold this over, I can see, like, can I find my leaves? My leaves are sticking out from the background there. Okay. And then you do it this way for the other values, like the one that one does cool and one does warm. And this will show you whether or not you have good values in those things. Okay. So these are invaluable tools as well. And then, of course, it has the color finding tools and all the, it shows you what happens with the pure color when you mix it with um, white or black or grays. Um, very, very wonderful little um, pocket tool. Not, not quite pocket. It's great for if you're going to decorate your home, carry it with you to the, the store to make decisions. Um, it has like the web colors on it and everything. So, okay. Okay, now I'm going to take the stuff off of here. It's the same exact technique. I'm not going to spend as much time on this one. To not have to base a clock is like the king of everything. Like, oh my gosh. To be able to um, have the numbers on there without, that are done by machine, that is like the best, best, best thing since sliced bread. This is sliced bread. This is going to slice bread for clocks. And so we'll just do the same process, and I'll come back to you when I've got it peeled off. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of my antique white to the edge areas and just blend that in. And I'll slip slap around. I've got quite a bit of dark right there, so it might take a little bit of extra slip slapping. I think if I was to do it differently, I think I'd go ahead and cut it um, right next to the line just to not have to worry about transitioning. But I definitely use a paper. So much better. So, 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 so much better. On this one, what I've done is I've given myself a ledge of the glue out here, and that's interesting too. So you want to make sure that you wipe away the glue that's coming around that outer edge. And I'll have texture and stuff on here, so I'm not worried about it, but it is something to watch for. You know, I'm learning about these things as I do the projects, the same as you guys, and I'll share what I learn. Let me just drag it out. Okay. Lost a little teeny bit of detail, but I... Just, I love that rustic look, so I'm good with that. We'll take the half pipe compass, which is a compass that has a lid, beautiful magical lid. You, and unless you have ever impaled yourself on one of those, um, you can't appreciate how wonderful it is. So I'm going to make a band all the way around. Now. This is just replicating what I did on the other ones, and I'm going to show you the others um, as part of this video. I don't, I'm not going to replicate it exactly, but I'll put the other instructions in so that you have the same, um, the same topper instructions. But um, one of the things that, that I feel like this, these are so cool, if I can get this in there. Once you varnish it, it will be heavy enough, it'll kind of hold itself. And so you'll just bend that over. Let's get a little distance here. And whoop. Okay, so now we have a hydrangea that can go with our topper, and then we've got the other ones that go with as well. To get easy um, border lines, what we can do is use our stretchy tape. And we anchor it. I'm going to get enough to get over to that next little hump thing there. Anchor it. We pull it. 
And then as we go around the corner, we pull it very strongly. And then you'll get it bending. Whoops, hello, wrong direction, sorry. As you go around the corner, you pull on it and then you guide it with your finger. And that is how you can get it to bend around the corners. And you'll notice puckering on this side, but this side is stretched. So I'll take this. And then what we'll do at that point, get it that direction. So we'll base coat it with um, Arbor Green. I'm going in the greens from this um, palette. You could do the greens from the other palette. You could totally make this is um, a slightly darker green. Um, so you could certainly have the slightly darker green. That wouldn't be a problem. But um, And so you just go tap right on. Make sure you bray it down with your finger. By tapping straight up and down, you won't have anything bleeding under. And you go into your dark green, your black forest green, and you'll just kind of do a little kind of tap, 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 little faux finish. Okay, we're going to pull out some texture crackle, and I'd like to point out that my texture crackle is getting kind of like lumpy looking. And the reason I want to point that out is because it's a thick so tropic. This palette knife is terrible, though. It's a thick so tropic. Um, this is one of those examples of things that are a great idea. I'm sure that this is a useful palette knife, but as a mixing tool, it doesn't work. So until I'm using it for a specific item, then I won't bring it into the website and won't share it with anybody because I don't think it's of value or of intrinsic value. Okay, so anyway, this is Thixotropic, and it gets creamier as you mix it. Okay, so I'm getting down to the bottom, and my bits are all loose and stuff, but as long as I don't have hard bits here, I'm okay. Okay, and we're going to mix this. This is the non-tinted one, so you can put paint in it. We're going to mix two piles. And go, last little bit of that. Mix two piles of this. And you don't want to put more than 50% paint. So I put way too much out, just enough to tint it the color you want it, and then stop. <clears throat> Those of you with cats, I apologize about the birds in the window. They have been noisy all spring. All right, so we're going to go on here, and we're going to just scrape on different bits here and there. And then you put it on kind of thin, and it's going to crack, and it's going to give us a lovely textured look. Maybe not too much of the bleach sand. Ideally, you put bleach sand in the bleach sand area. And sorry, I'm off camera again. I'm going to take tack it over and over and I'm going to make my stencil sticky, but the thing that I'm going to do that's a little bit weird is I'm going to make it sticky on both sides. And the reason I'm going to make it sticky on both sides is I'm going to have to reverse it. What's interesting is the paint, time for a new bottle of tack it too, I think. The paint is going to make it not be sticky um, once I paint over it. At least I'm pretty sure that that's a true statement. So I know I'm going to want this scrolly scroll right here. Make sure that that's, yeah. So instead of doing the whole thing, I'm going to do a portion of it since I'm going to do both sides. Okay, we'll let it dry till it's clear. And then we'll sticky the other side. Okay, to wash out your um, applicator, this is the Jumbo um, Dauber. To wash that out, you just take it to the sink and immediately do cold water and it'll be all clean. Okay, to, um, I'm going to antique the topper with burnt umber 
And if it looks too pink, I'm going to mix just a little bit of the green in with it. Sometimes that burnt umber um, wants to suck up on the, um, the texture medium. So texture crackle. And I'm just going to bring it on down. A little bit of messy, messy here and there. We can totally have some slip slap movement for texture in the background. I'm going to wipe it off of And then as we just, I'm just going to look for a little bit of texture and um, get a little bit of texture and then we're going to do our scrolls. I'm going to increase the um, amount of distance that my float is out with a dry rub of burnt umber. So I'll float right next to it and then I'll draw it out with the crescent brush using dry um, burnt umber. You can round that and it'll catch on all that little texture. It'll make it really cool. That just gives us a little bit more deeper shading. And then I can go in and I can intensify it if I want to in the corners. And I can draw it in this area here. And that just gets it deeper. And see how that catches on tops of the, the texture. That's just cool. Okay, I'm going to use the scroll. And I'm going to make it fit right on in there. And then I'm just going to, whoops, I'm going to pat it down. Now it's sticky on both sides, so patting it down is going to be a little trickier than I think. I'm going to use a little bit of antique white and my light, my medium green. Arbor green, and I want to just just show a little bit of scroll work. Coming out here, I'm using the ink sweeper, and I want to keep it off of the other areas of my stencil. So I could have gone to the um, fingertip daubers; that would have worked too. This is nice for these long scrolly things. Okay, and so that little bit dark, um, I think it's going to be okay though, and I'll show you how I would fix that. Now I'll wait until this is dry, so my green's not wet on there, and then I will flip it over and do the other side. Okay, if we think something is just a little bit strong, like this line right here, I can just fuzz it down with a little bit of my base color. And I decided to go back in and do the lower scrolls, and that's really pretty. Okay, so that's just a very simple finish. I'm going to trim it out with a little bit of gold. I'm going to use brass metal powders. It comes in a powder. So you mix it in. And you mix it with, I'm going to use gloss varnish because it's the shiniest. And then it turns it into instant metal paint. But you can mix as much of the powder in as you want. And that means it'll base coat the first time instead of having to go over and over it. Okay, so you get that mixed, and you can thin it with water. And they come in um, sample sets like these, or they come in big sizes. Um, I recommend the big size of the brass, for sure, and then the rest is just a matter of what you like. So I'll mix some water with it. Now, if you wanted to create um, just one one kind of... Let's just talk about this for a second. Okay. So we're going to just pull down, and this is where the bridge is going to be, my friend. If I can get over it, a little bit, this is hard just because I'm on camera. If I can get over it, I can pull my stroke down easier. So um, with the metal um, with this finish, okay, we have this done very simply. Now, when I had done the other one, um, then what I had done is I had done like red berries and things like that. But when we're looking at the red berries next to this project, it's like, eh, I shouldn't have done the red berries because then it dictates. Okay, by doing it simple, it goes with 
um, this hydrangea. We can go on to this one with the nutcracker with the cutout um, poinsettia on the bottom. Okay, so now it goes with that as well. And I can do something country and have it go with my chicken. So by keeping the red off of here, and I do a little bit maybe with the gold, I could put gold little dots on there. Um, then it just it makes it so that I can change my base other colors. I hope that you enjoyed the project. I think this thing is just the coolest. The image transfer is fantastic. Um, I hope that you go out and try it today because you will be so amazed.